In this video, I'm going to reveal 11 of my favorite wines that sell for around $40 per bottle, give or take. There's red wines and white wines in a number of different countries and regions represented, so there should be something for everyone. Located in Poyac, Aubage Liberal is a fifth growth in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. It has 30 hectares planted to vine, three quarters of which are planted to Cabernet Sauvignon, and one quarter of which is planted to Merlot. These vines average 35 years of age. Beginning with the 2019 vintage, Aubage Liberal was certified both organic and biodynamic. I've previously recommended the outstanding 2019 and 2020 vintages for this producer, and those continue to be strong buys, although they most likely will set you back closer to $50 than this $40 price point. However, Aubage Liberal also has a tremendous wine from the 2023 vintage that's currently available on Futures and which sells for right around $40 per bottle. Cabernet Sauvignon was king in 2023, so this wine has a little bit more Cabernet Sauvignon than usual, around 86%, and the rest is Merlot. This wine has pronounced aromatic intensity with descriptors that include blackberry, blackcurrant, violets, licorice, and tobacco. This is a wine that's surprisingly approachable early on, but it'll certainly cruise in your cellar for up to 15 years or so. Iconic Spanish winery La Rioja Alta traces its roots way back to 1890. La Rioja Alta's wines are the result of traditional winemaking principles combined with the use of modern, state-of-the-art winemaking technology. As but one example, La Rioja Alta recently deployed an optical sorting machine in their winery. The result was a much greater selection of fruit that eliminated some fruit that had previously gone into the wines. As a result, quality is higher than ever across the board. La Rioja Alta sources the fruit for its Tempranillo-based wines from some of the best areas in Rioja. They control every aspect of the wine production and even craft their own barrels internally. The next top wine for $40 a bottle is the 2017 La Rioja Alta Vina Ardanza Reserva. This wine is a blend that consists of 80% Tempranillo and 20% Garnacha. This fruit was all organically farmed. Descriptors for this wine include mixed berry, licorice, spice, and balsamic. Comes in at 14.5% alcohol by volume. This is one that's already showing well on release, but it will certainly cruise in your cellar for up to six or seven years or so. Located in Piedmont, Italy, G.D. Vira is a family-owned producer that traces its roots way back to the 1880s. This next top wine for $40 a bottle offers compelling value at this price point. I'm not normally a fan of the 2020 vintage for Barolo, as I found that many of those wines tend to be a little bit overly ripe for my personal taste. Instead, I typically prefer vintages like 2015, 16, and 2019. However, the 2020 GD Vira Barolo Albe is a wine that absolutely crushed it in the 2020 vintage. This highly acclaimed wine is definitely a wine that will benefit from another two to three years of additional bottle age, but after that it will make an ideal cellar defender and help you to keep your hands off some of those other vintages that are particularly strong and which will require additional bottle aging. This is a mineral driven wine with descriptors that include raspberry, cherry, mixed spice, and rose petals. There's ample acidity and a long lingering finish. Definitely a no-brainer if you're a fan of Nebbiolo. Arnais means little rascal. This grape is aptly named because it's exceedingly difficult to grow. So difficult, in fact, that it almost became extinct in the 1960s. But legendary producer Bruno Giacosa, along with one other winery, helped to save it from extinction back then by bottling it commercially. While many of Bruno Giacosa's wines are quite pricey, the next top wine for $40 a bottle, namely the 2022 Bruno Giacosa Ruero Arnais, sells for a very reasonable $40 per bottle. This is a wine that I discovered during my first trip to Piedmont when I was looking for a white wine to pair with some of the early courses. This is a wine that's commonly found on many Italian restaurant wine lists throughout the world, so I definitely encourage you to give it a try the next time you see it. This is a wine that pairs extremely well with starter courses, salads, seafoods, and pastas. 
If you're not familiar with Arnais, you can expect descriptors such as lemon, peach, apricot, pineapple, floral aromatics, and wet stone. It tends to be medium plus in body. It is naturally low in acidity, but especially the Bruno Giacosa bottling is extremely well balanced. So definitely a very interesting wine and one that I highly recommend for around $40 per bottle. Next up is the 2020 Tardieu Laurent Cornas. Tardieu Laurent produces numerous world-class bottlings from Appalachians throughout the northern and southern Rhone regions of France. Tardieu Laurent is a negociant. This means that it sources the fruit for its wines from growers with which it has established long-term relationships. Tardieu Laurent's growers focus on producing fruit from old vines with low yields. Tardieu Laurent's approach to winemaking emphasizes purity of fruit. As such, they mature their wines in large oak foudres or concrete, and they don't do any fining or filtration. Cornas is the farthest south Appalachian in the northern Rhone, tends to have more of a Mediterranean climate, and it's extremely warm. Many of the vineyards have south and west facing aspect, as it's a bit of an amphitheater of sorts. As with Hermitage, Cornas wines are known for having substantial structure and tannins and typically benefit from some additional bottle aging post-release. If you're enjoying Cornas, you're enjoying Syrah, as Cornas is required to be 100% Syrah. The 2020 Tardieu Laurent Cornas is a full-bodied wine that comes in at 14% alcohol by volume. Descriptors include blackberry, blueberry, iron, and violets. This is a wine that you can enjoy over the next 15 to 20 years. Marquez de Morieta is rapidly becoming one of my favorite wineries, not just in Spain, but in the entire world. This excellent historic producer was founded way back in the 1850s. Impressively, they produce all their wines from their 300 hectares of estate vineyards that are located in Logroño. This is definitely unusual for Rioja, as especially many of the top producers that produce large volumes of Rioja wines source a substantial percentage of their fruit. So the next top wine for $40 per bottle is the 2019 Marquez de Morieta Rioja Reserva, which I found selling for around $38 per bottle. This excellent wine is a blend that consists of 87% Tempranillo, and there's also smaller amounts of Graciano, Mazuelo, and Garnacha. This is a wine that matures for two years in American oak, only 10% of which is new, and then another 14 months in bottle before it's released. It's a wine that's already showing extremely well, but which will age in your cellar effortlessly for at least a decade or so. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Pesach Leonion Bay Chateau Carbonu is located in a nice neighborhood, very close to Smith Oat Lafitte. This is a massive estate with 92 hectares planted to vine. Carbonu is a classified growth in the Grave classification for both red wine and white wine, but today I'm featuring their excellent Bordeaux Blanc, which sells for right around $40 in the U.S and probably closer to $30 in Europe. The current release of the Carbonu Bordeaux Blanc was a bit polarizing with critics, with scores ranging from a high of 95 to a low of 90. The bone of contention was apparently the high acidity and the fact that some of the critics thought that the wine was a little bit tart. But if you enjoy high acid wines, then you'll definitely want to give this one a try. This current release is a blend that consists of two-thirds Sauvignon Blanc and one-third Semillon. Flavors and aromas include lemon, green apple, gooseberry, and peach, and it has abundant acidity. Chateau Soudriro is a historic estate that's located very close to the legendary Chateau de Cam. Soudriro has 90 hectares of vines that are planted to 88% Semillon and 12% Sauvignon Blanc. The 2020 Chateau Soudriro Sautern is the next top wine for $40 and this wine sells for around $40 for a half bottle. The 2020 vintage was extremely well received by critics as it received five scores that range between 96 points and 98 points. This particular vintage is 100% Semillon. Most high quality Sauterne tends to be dominant in Semillon as Semillon is capable of aging much better than Sauvignon Blanc as it tends to gain additional complexity. 
Sauvignon Blanc is capable of aging, but doesn't tend to get the same sort of complexity and improve with age like Semillon does. In my view, Sauterne is extremely underrated right now. Prices are extremely reasonable, and sweet wines tend to be out of vogue. While this wine is sweet, it's also balanced by abundant acidity, so it's extremely well balanced. It's delicious on release, but it's also capable of aging effortlessly in your cellar for a number of decades. Due to the fact that it's out of favor, you can even get old vintages with substantial age on them for extremely reasonable prices. So whether you're buying new release wines such as this Swoodry Row, or you're getting back vintages, now is definitely an excellent time to stock up on Sauterne if that's something that you enjoy. Domaine Druan was one of the first Burgundy producers to invest in Willamette Valley, and since that time, many more have followed suit. The 2022 Willamette Valley Pinot Noirs are being rolled out now, and the next top wine for $40 a bottle is the 2022 Domaine Druan Rose Rock Pinot Noir, which is from the Eola Amity Hills AVA in Willamette Valley. This wine is a cuvee selection that comes from 35 different blocks of estate-grown fruit in the Eola Amity Hills AVA. This wine is a consistent performer year after year, and the 2022 vintage was well received by critics. This is a wine that's refined and elegant with a silky texture. You can definitely enjoy this wine immediately, but it's certainly capable of aging as well. This is a wine that features flavors and aromas of raspberry, cherry, orange peel, floral notes, and mixed spice. The Mandruan also has an outstanding Chardonnay as well. Before he founded John Duval Wines in 2003, John Duval worked for Penfolds for nearly 30 years, including 17 years as head winemaker. Among other things, he was responsible for producing the iconic Penfolds Grange, so he certainly knows a thing or two about producing world-class Shiraz. So the next top wine for $40 a bottle is the John Duval Entity Shiraz. The fruit for this wine comes from 13 different vineyards, three quarters of which are located in the Barossa Valley, and one quarter of which are located in the Eden Valley. This wine offers compelling quality for the price. It's a wine that's designed to be enjoyed immediately, but will age up to 15 years as well. Flavors and aromas for this wine include blackberry, plum, licorice, violet, cedar, and vanilla. Camiliano is a quality-minded producer of Brunello di Montalcino that was founded back in 1957 by the current owner's father. In the 1980s, they began an ambitious replanting program in the vineyard, and as a result, they have 100 hectares planted to vine out of an overall estate that's around 500 hectares. Subsequently, they built an underground cellar and they also began to use organic farming methods. As a result, quality has never been higher at Camigliano. So the next top wine for $40 a bottle is the Camigliano Brunello de Montalcino from the outstanding 2019 vintage. They produced around 16,000 cases of this wine, so you should be able to track one down with no difficulty. This is an enjoyable Brunello de Montalcino with descriptors that include blackberry, fig, plum, cherry, and spice, it's one that's showing well relatively young, but is certainly capable of aging for up to 10 years as well. 2019 is a phenomenal vintage for Brunello di Montalcino, and this is yet another reminder to keep adding them to your collection. If you'd like to learn more about that tremendous vintage and some of my other recommendations for 2019 Brunello di Montalcino, be sure to check out this video that's linked above.